Hi, in this video, I'm going to make a, a 3D scan of this uh, fishing lure. Uh, this one is weight uh, 337 grams, but the customer, he wants to scale it up to 550 grams. So I'm going to use a math tree for making this scan. After the scan, I will do a post-processing in Adobe Substance 3D Modeler for cleaning up because I'm not going to reverse this in CAD. And then I will use the scale function in the slicer to scale up the volume and 3D print the scale one with the nylon filament. To make the casting roll for the fishing lure, I need to place the print onto the hard rubber, a silicone pad, and it will heat up to about 100 degrees Celsius. With the hydraulic place, it will create imprints for casting on the silicone rubber. I will scan on two sides because this part is very heavy, so I can't hold it upright. I will just simply lay it down like this with the clay support and scan in this orientation and then flip over to scan in the second orientation and then I merge it. Uh, merging with the uh, modern form is quite easy because it's a uh, high precision 3D scanner and it requires no markers. So I don't want to waste time um, arranging turntable and a marker so this will be uh, more suitable for a scanning part like this. I have a already sprayed the fish with the SKDS2 uh, developer spray. Place it on the turntable like this. Going to adjust focusing point and also the exposure. Uh, LED color is too bright. And for the capture, I would use the medium setting without the color. And for the turntable, a uh, six round would be enough for this. Uh, next, I'm going to calibrate the turntable. Calibration board like so. So see, it's um, already detected. The position is going to turn a few times to find the axis and the distance from the tree scanner. So it can align the scanner object without using the marker. Okay, now it's already calibrated. So I cannot move the turntable because the turning axis is already registered to the scanner. Okay, it's all done. Uh, let's check the scanning result and do a post processing. MAF3 interface, SQ will be a uh, lasso 2. So each color here is uh, from a different scan. Okay, let's merge this to a uh, scan together. Align scan, click on auto. Align the uh, second one to the first one. Okay, so the alignment is complete. I'm going to remove the hoop in the back here because I don't need it. With the math tray, you can also uh, measure the distance. See, 175.35. And merge scan, merge the visible only. Okay, so it's now merged. I'm going to merge this one so it can uh, close the opening. Okay, all done. The process doesn't take long from the start of scanning until uh, getting the result. So I'm going to clean up imperfection uh, using Adobe Substance uh, 3D Modeler. I'm going to import the mesh. So next, I'm going to convert this into the clay. Okay, I'm going to click on the object and then I'm going to click on the smooth tools. You click on the control to control the size of the pen. Uh, you can use the smooth tool to remove the noise from the scan as well. So it's gonna be some of the imperfection here and there. Alright, so look like we are done. I'm going to export this for printing. 
And I'm going to use this uh, filament for printing, uh, Polymicopia from uh, Polymaker. It has the reflecting temperature around 110 degrees Celsius, but the tensile strength is very high, so it should be able to withstand the pressure inside of the silicone pad molding. Okay, here's in the credit slicer. I will align this object in this orientation, and you can see a small tab here. I use this add part and cube and I create a small cube so I use the scale command here to create a 10 by 5 by 0.4 millimeter um, this tab will help uh, to stabilize print because uh, it's very tall and the bottom part here is has a very small contact area with the build plate I'm going to use the uh, three support with the uh, top C distance 0.1 because I'm gonna cut this tab with a side clipper so I don't need a lot of space for the C distance and for the walls I increase it from uh, two layer to uh, three layers because it's going to be complex with the placing machine and for the infill I increase it from 15% to 25% Okay, so this uh, three support will help uh, stabilize the, the print. I found that uh, three wall is quite effective. A uh, four, five, or six wall, you start to not uh, gaining any strength while um, you are uh, paying for more of the materials. Okay, so I hope that it will reach this point without falling. <laughs> Maybe I should add more. Uh, let's try Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Click on M. I'm gonna move it down. Place it like here. I hope. Let's uh, put it lower. Let's try um, to slice it. <laughs> it's safer, right? So about this point, it's going to have a support, right? So it shouldn't fall. Okay. So I send it uh, to printing. So the printing speed for the nylon is quite slow, and it requires no heater chamber. So I have a problem here. There's a layer separation. If you look at here, you see that a layer chip is only occur on the object, but not the support. The support is no true at all. So this object move on this side. So it could be the vibration because of stability. The mounting of the tab is not enough to hold this firmly. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add tabs between this point and this point. A few more on the upper side. I put the support on the side. So we have already uh, passed the point of failure from the last time. In conclusion, adding the tabs on another exit will help increasing the stability of the print. Okay, this will be the final design of the tabs. I add the tabs here on the opposite side so that the gripping base of the three supports will be wider. And I do some changes on here. I change the first layer expansion to 10 millimeters. So the three support will have a wider base. Print has finished. Takes about four and a half hours. This is one of the largest fishing lure I have ever print with a nylon. This one is 337 grams. And this one after casting, it should weigh 530 grams. So I'm not an angler, but what kind of fish is going to bite that? Let's talk about the print failure. This will be the first print. Uh, that is because uh, there is not enough support. There is no bracing in the y direction, only in the x direction. So it's vibrate uh, during the sea hop. This will be the second print that fell. I have a bracing on the x axis 
and also I add two more for the y-axis. Um, the problem with this failure is not vibration or stability. The problem is that the adhesion of the three support is too small. You can see the first one is larger, the second one is smaller because I reduced the support height. When it goes lower, the size of the three support will be smaller as well. When the nozzles is printing with the nylon, there's going to be uh, some a dragging force from the nozzles when it print and that dragging force is not much but when the prints get taller it's, uh, it's enough to lift um, the part out of the build plate so when I saw it it's dragging in this direction and it's pull this part off the plate and fall back so that's why I stopped the print third time I have improved a lot of things uh, first is that I put the small tab in a higher position so that the base of the tree support will be larger and number two I add uh, the size of the laugh here I change it to 10 millimeters the contact area of the laugh is larger than the previous one the offset here is only 2 millimeters the trunk size is small so I also add uh, more support on the back side of the fishing lure so that it will be counterbalanced when the nozzle is moving, the base here is, is wider. And I also use the PVP glues. There's two kinds of glue stick, a PVA and PVP. The one that will stick with the nylon, ABS, a PETG, PLA, that one is PVP glue. Uh, if you pick the one with the PVA, it will not adhere to the nylon or the ABS. So with the texture PI sheet, I will just uh, tap it like this and if you have a smooth uh, PI sheet, I will just swipe it but you don't do that with the texture one because it's going to grind away the adhesive it's going to be a mess if you swipe it Okay and for the part without PVP glue, you can peel it off here so the nylon is not sticking to the PEI sheet very well. So to make a top print like this, you need to manage the bracing of the object. Uh, it should be able to withstand the dragging force from the nozzles, even though it's, it's not much when it's short, but when the part is taller, so it's very small. Um, dragging force from the nozzles can tip over um, your print and for the nylon uh, when you do use support with the nylon it's not going to come off so I use the tab small tab here it's 0.4 mm so I can use the side cutter to cut it okay let's uh, remove the support Nice and clean. The, the reason I print in this what they call orientation because I need to maintain um, the shape of the cross section. This shape will make the fishing will move in a certain way when it's uh, sinking into the water. So my customer he wants me to keep shape just scale the part. So this shape is very important. If I print it in the horizontal position like this, it's going to be a lot of support required to print this and it's going to ruin the, the shape of the fishing rod. So if I print in this vertical position and put a small tab 0.4 mm in thickness and cut it off later, I get a clean surface as if there, there would be a support here. You can't even see the mark. Okay, so uh, that's it guys for watching, I'll see you in the next video.